Hello guys, welcome to GFS Sport TV once again. This is Ellie and in these very tutorials I'll be teaching you guys how to design a flyer. Yes, a stunning one, just like what you are seeing on the screen. I know some of you might have been expecting this. So, fine, without wasting much time, let's quickly dive into it. launch photoshop because we'll be using photoshop for these very tutorials so make sure your photoshop is launched and what we need to do is we need to set up a new um, working canvas or a new window so go ahead and click on create new and name it you can give it any name of your choice so i would want to name this hot yummy burger underscore flyer yes so this is going to be an e-flyer for social media either ig or facebook so we'll be using the standard resolution which is 1080 by 1080 pixels for the width and height so make sure you your project settings in terms of the width and height is 1080 by 1080 and your resolution should be 300 yes so leave the rest of the settings the way it is and then click on OK when you, once you are done. Right, so we succeeded in setting up a new working canvas for our beggar flyer design. So let's go ahead and save this whilst we work on the project. And I'll always advise you guys to always remember to save so that you don't get to lose your um, your project you are working on in order to avoid any back and forth i have already done this thing in reference to the previous um, flyer i designed so all i need to do is to overwrite it okay right so now let me import the flyer we'll be working on into our canvas so all i need to do is to come to file and then click on place embed and then click on the flyer we will be redesigning yes so let me place it somewhere here so that we can be using it for reference okay so what i need to do now is to lock this layer the flyers layer the reference so that i don't mistakenly go and select it or manipulate it right so now we have our background here and i think that's cool so i would like us to start with the background okay so what i want us to do is we need to get this gradient background here that's the orange looking background in the reference so in order to do that we need to create a new layer you can come here um, and click on this to create a new layer or you can simply duplicate the background layer by pressing ctrl j and it will duplicate for you right so let's name this as um, bg or orange bg in order to differentiate it from the one at the beneath it orange bg okay right so we need to apply our gradients just as i did in the reference flyer so in order to do that you need to um come to your effects uh, button and click on it and then you select gradient overlay gradient overlay um sorry i need to give it a, a fill first of all so in order to give it a fill i simply come here select any color and then alt backspace to apply yes because the layer cannot be empty and you apply a gradient so you need to fill it so that it doesn't become an empty layer so let's go back to our effects panels so click on it and then select gradient overlay right 
I have already done this before, so that is why it's there. So let's assume I have a different color by default as gradients. And then I want to change it to these very gradient settings I have here. So I come to the position of the gradients. So I come to I locate the picker based on the position of the color. So I click on my color and then I apply the color I want to use. I so you can just use the color picker tool and select a color from your canvas or you can just come here and select a color of your choice but i already have the color code for this previous job that i've done so i need to refer to my color code i'm going in for the red uh, for now so i simply copy my color code and then paste here right okay and then move to the other end of it by clicking on the um, on the picker over there and then change the color to your preferred color so i'm going to use orange over here right so that's it and click on ok so it is not in the position in which I want it to be. The, I want the orange to go up and then the red part of the gradient to come down. Just as seen in the reference. So in order to do that, you need to tweak the angle. So just play along with the angle. Play along with the angle until you get your desired results. Okay. Yes. So this is what I'm looking out for yeah so once you are done with your gradient settings simply go ahead and click on ok right so that's it so let's lock this very background okay you can choose not to lock it a bit i would prefer to lock i prefer to lock backgrounds when working in my projects so the next thing over here is the wooden texture which we have here something like a wooden table or wooden base or wooden floor so in order to have access to some of the um, some of the uh, props i use for this very tutorials you can check in the video description i've already um i've already stated your links over there so when you click on their links then you can have access to save or download the images that i used in this project okay right so now let's go in for the wooden um, texture so you simply come to file and then click on place embedded and then browse for i i have already created um, i've already saved them into a folder called assets so let me open my assets folder and then bring it out wooden texture right so our wooden texture has successfully been imported into the photoshop canvas which we are working on good so let me just crop out the portions i don't need for now i don't need this white portion so i simply go to my rectangular marquee tool and then create a border or a boundary around it and then control j and then delete the old one good so this is our wooden texture so now let me position it based on the to correspond with what we have in the reference okay so now you realize that uh, let me zoom this you will realize that we have some sort of perspective for the wooden floor so if we want to create that perspective on our wooden texture what we need to do is to um, press ctrl t to bring out the transform uh, controls and then you right click and then you select perspective okay 
so with perspective in order to achieve our perspective what we need to do is we need to click and drag from any of the edges at the ends at the far ends okay so you can either choose to drag from here or from here to create that perspective view for our image yes i think this is okay for me right so we have been able to achieve our perspective on the wooden texture okay so let me name this wooden texture let me move it up a bit good as i said always remember to save you can just go to file and click on save or you can simply press ctrl s and need to overwrite what you are doing or it will override the previous works that you saved always save your work whilst working right so now i would want to bring in our beggar and our chips image so by going to file then you click on place and batch and then you browse for the image so i have my beggar image here click on place okay so let me scale it to my desired um, size okay so that's it and then let's bring in the chips also file place and batch and then going for the chips and then you hold down shift if you want to scale an image it's recommended that you hold down shift and alt and then you click from any of the edges so that you can maintain the aspect ratio of the image so that there'll be no sort of distortion in any way or you won't have one side longer or wider so that's it right and based on our reference we will realize the chips is standing that's the french for us so what you need to do is you need to come to any of the edges with your mouse cursor until it tends to um, a two arrow um, image and then you you click and drag so what we are doing now is we are rotating the chips to be in the um, in the particular position we need okay so this is how you can do rotation so you click and drag wait to your mouse cursor is has turned into an arrow and then you click and drag and tilt it based on your desired um, position so once that is okay you release you press enter to release your mouse right so we have ended up positioning the beggar and also the french fries in its pack just as seen in the reference um, flyer we are using so the next thing i want us to take is the text okay um, over here we have hot yummy beggar we tantalize your taste buds with the best beggars you could ever imagine or die yours today and all that so we are going to be working on the text all right so the fonts if you really like the fonts i used in this project i have indicated I have uh, I have stated the names of the fonts that I used in the video description so you can check it out okay and download the same fonts or if you would want to use your own fonts for this very tutorial so that's okay but I would want to maintain the fonts that I used for this all right so let's get along so you create a new layer and then um, going for your text tool click in any part of your photoshop canvas 
and then type your text so i already have my text saved down from the previous artwork i did so i just have to copy it okay so i'm just going to duplicate this so that we can move quickly yeah control j gives you a duplicate of your layer or anything you are working on control j to duplicate this uh, to get this text so we simply going to copy and paste okay then let's do that for other yours today same thing I'm going to do here. I'm simply going to copy and paste. And then I repeat the process till I'm done. Let me scale this down a bit. Okay, right. So now let's start positioning our um, our text to correspond with what we have in the um, in the reference flyer so let me make it the reference flyer smaller so that we'll have enough space to work with always remember to save good so how to yummy um, let me go to the font I use. I use Merindia for this. So I'm simply going to click on my text tool and then click um, and then make sure my font is selected. That's the particular font I want to uh, manipulate or change the font uh, style. So I use Merindia. So I'm going to come here and select Merienda. Type it out. Merienda regular right so that's it and then for my beggar i'm going to scale it up a bit because i want it much bigger and also to correspond with what we have in the reference flyer so uh, i'm here to look at the font i use okay so i used icl me just excuse me if i didn't pronounce that well hey what am i doing <laughs> i'm sorry so i need to search for that font here from the font style right so that's it and then i need to scale it up a bit And then make sure it's center aligned to the one at the top. One thing about design, accuracy is very, very important. So you need to make sure your um, you need to make sure your fonts or your props are properly aligned. Okay, right. So let's do the same thing for the subtitle. Let's do the same thing for this. So I want to scale it down a bit and then check for the fonts I used. I used Cobel for this. So I'm going to go back to my text tool and then go to my um, font style parameters and then select Cobel. Yes. So I'm going to scale it down a bit. Let me scale this up a bit. right i think we are good on this one 
then let's work on the rest of the text also the same process as used for the ones the, the previous ones so with other your study i use the font style called impact so i'm quickly going to activate that whilst we move along So I'm going to do the same for this also. I think this one I use Corbel. Yes. Okay. Right. So now let's work on the colors for the fonts. So as you can see, the hot yummy beggar is yellow. So I'm going to apply yellow to it. So make sure your font, the particular font you want the color to be applied on is selected from your um, layer panel. And then you go to the color panel and select the particular color you would want to apply to it. So I'm going for yellow and then to apply it, Alt Backspace. Yeah, make sure that font is selected and then alt backspace okay always remember to save so i think we are done for the text so the next thing i would want us to do is um, to add these lines over here these curvy lines you are seeing here so from the video description you will see a link to download it. So I've already indicated a link for all the props I used in these very tutorials. So you can download all so that you can follow along with this tutorial. So you can choose to use your own props. Okay. All right. So the curvy lines, uh, let's bring it in. Curvy lines. I've already cropped it. Yeah. I'll be doing a video tutorials on how you can crop some of your props or images okay so yeah keep watching i'll be doing a video tutorials on how you can crop images yes but i've already cropped these ones for these very tutorials so that we don't waste much time so i need to rasterize it and then i need to select it because I want to change the color so I want to give it white so I simply go to my color panel and select white and then click alt backspace to activate the color on my objects yes so now we have it at the left hand side and then in the image you realize in the flyer in the reference flyer you realize we already have it um, at both ends both the left and the right so we don't necessarily need to import another one and then apply another color we can simply do this by doing a duplicate of the first one that we already have so to do a duplicate on your keyboard press ctrl j or command j if you are using a mac so ctrl j yes and then click and drag to the right end because we are trying to create a duplicate of this one at the right end. And um, you, over here, you realize it has been flipped. So in order to do the same thing here, you come to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Right. So that's it. Our object has been successfully flipped. So now let's go back to the reference uh, flyer to check out the rest of the um, the rest of the things we haven't done yet. So over here you can see we have this sun ray background. So it's also available in the video description. I'll drop a link there to download this, or in case you have something similar to follow along with the process. Yeah, 
uh, uh, to follow along with the um, project feel free to you know use it so let me import the one i already have so file place embed and then i go in for my summary good so let's rasterize it so that it can be editable and then um i would like to trim this okay i would like to trim this up to where the um, wooden uh, texture is starting from so in order to do that i simply need to go in for my rectangular marquee tool and then click and drag around the portion of the sun ray i want to crop out or i would like to use so once i'm done then control j to create a duplicate of my selection on a new layer and then i go to the previous layer and delete it yes so you realize over here um it is carrying a different color shade so what we have to do here is you need to make sure your sun ray layer is selected and then um you click on you you hold down control on your keyboard and click on the layer to select the layer itself the object itself because what we want to do here is we want to change the color okay so i will go ahead and select uh, let me check out the color that was used here oh, um, that's yellow okay so i'll go ahead and select yellow or oh, white let me use white you can still achieve that with white and then come here and change the blend mode to screen sorry i think we need to use the we need to apply yellow right so come to the blend mode and then change it to screen so once you've changed it to screen um, then you can reduce the opacity or you can choose to do that you can just choose to reduce the opacity without having to play around with the blend mode okay right so let me scale this up a bit uh, in order to achieve something cool yes so you realize this is overlapping the sun ray is overlapping our beggar so we need to move it behind the beggar layer yes because it's a background so we need to move it backwards good always remember to save your work we are almost done so what i did here is um let's get back to the reference image so you realize this portion has, of the sun ray has been faded a bit. So you can achieve that by using your eraser. So simply click on the eraser tool. And then make sure the eraser brush is big enough to give you that, um, to give you that fading effect you need. Or that big, uh, or, or to be able to fade that big, uh, portion you need quickly just like what i'm doing here so once you are done you drop your eraser by clicking on the move tool yes so this is how i came out with this okay right so the next thing we have here is you realize this th there's a base for the contact information there's a black base so let's quickly do the black base so create a new layer and then go in for your rounded rect rectangle tool because as you can see based on the reference image the edges are rounded okay so go in for your rounded rectangle tool 
and then select the black color or you can choose to draw it and then applying the color to it later however you want to do that so let's click and drag on our canvas at the particular position we want it to be yes so that's it so you need to rasterize it in order to make it editable because we will still manipulate it right so now back to our reference image have you noticed a difference um, there is this this part has been like there's some sort of arc created here so in order to achieve that on our rounded rectangle make sure the rounded rectangle is selected and then on your keyboard press ctrl t to bring out the transform controls and then right click on your object which is the rounded rectangle we are using and then select warp warp will give you that function okay then you click and drag then you click and drag around the portion that you want to bench and then once you are done you press enter let me expand this a bit Let's move it up a bit let me space this out because we'll be adding icons good so now we have achieved our base where the contacts details are displayed okay or the background where the contact is details are, are displayed so now the next thing i would like us to take is the icons yes so the icons are also the link to the particular icons i use for this project are listed in the video description or you can choose to use anyone you have for this tutorial that's fine the idea is for you to understand how um, this is being achieved so now let me go ahead and import my icons into my canvas by going to file click on place and batch and um, I would like to go in for my phone icon first of all scale it down to the desired size I want then it's not visible because of the color so I need to rasterize it so that I can manipulate it and then make sure it's selected by holding down control and clicking so you see this um, dotted moving um, icon a uh, object around it that will show that you have selected it and then going for the color so you can simply come here to the color panel to select your color but i would like to pick the same color i used here the same yellow so i need to go to my um eyedropper tool yes to select the color i need so once that is done then i press alt backspace to activate the color on my icon so as you can see the color has been activated so now we need to repeat this for the email address and also the location so it is the same process so let me quickly go ahead and do that scale it down make sure it's rasterized so that it can be editable select it and then apply the color drag into the desired position so I have to do the same for the location also place embedded location Let 
space this out a bit so that it looks uniform So you can just simply right click to select your layer. It will be easy for you to locate your layer if you have named your layer, just as I've done here. Okay. So, that's it. And then... Uh, let's get back to our reference image. You realize that there's a shadow beneath for it to look more realistic that the beggar is on the floor or is on the table or is on the wooden um, texture or the wooden object itself. So in order to achieve that, you can simply um, go in for the ellipse tool from your toolbar click on the ellipse tool click and drag behind the beggar layer it is above so I need to send it behind by clicking and dragging behind the beggar layer and this is not the color we need for the shadow so for the shadow we need black so go to your color um, panel and select black and then alt backspace and then rasterize it to make sure it's editable okay yes so that is it but this ain't looking like a shadow so we need to make it more realistic so in order to do that what we need to do is we need to come to the eraser tool and fade the edges a bit so select the eraser tool and then um, play with the brush size to make sure um, this is the brush size to make sure the size of the brush is okay for you yes so the you click and drag around the edges of the ellipse or the circle anyhow you want to call it right so we are getting there then you can scale it a bit uh, let me still wipe this portion a bit with my eraser tool. So once you are done, um, it's still not looking like a real shadow. It's too thick. So come to the opacity and then reduce it from here. From your layer panel, you reduce the opacity a bit. To show a more refined shadow good let me increase it a bit right so we've come to the end of this tutorial now we are done with our reference image let me take it off we successfully come to the end of this tutorial um sorry i think there's one more thing we didn't apply can you see that under the beggar, that's behind the beggar, we have um, a shadow there? Okay, so in order to do that, we make sure our beggar layer is selected. And then duplicate it by pressing Ctrl J. And then the layer beneath it is what you apply the shadow layer to. So with that, we need a black color. So we go in for our black and then press Alt Backspace. Okay. And then click and drag it to change the position a bit. Right. So that's it. We have successfully applied our shadow effects to our text. So let me go back to look at the uh, reference uh, image. Right. So I think we successfully come to an end of this 
tutorial of um, flyer creation so if you enjoy this video and you would love more exciting contents I mean simply give your comments under the comment section and also if you would want me to produce tutorials on specific topics specific topics fine feel free to also let me know under the comment section okay so even if it's not about photoshop and it's about any other graphic um, application that you want me to create a tutorial about feel free to um, share your opinion under the comment section and i will surely do something about it okay if this is your first time of uh, visiting my channel i would urge you to subscribe to my channel as i'll be bringing you more and more and more informative content in this regard and make sure to share make sure to like my videos and i'll see you in the next video take care